Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Sheehy and I will be your virtual host for the TFCon uh, third party panel presentation. Uh, I'm sorry that we couldn't be there in person all together uh, to see some exciting new reveals, um, but I'm happy to be here today to share with all of you. First up is New Age Toys. Here we have New Age H21 Scaramanga. Uh, they're homage to Soundwave. You can see here he's in his Walkman mode. It says he's about 10.2 centimeters, which is roughly four inches. Um, he will include extra shiny tapes, and he will also include um, uh, die-cast uh, metal parts. Included with H21 Scaramanga are New Age's versions of Ravage and Rumble and Ratbat and Laserbeak. Next up is Zeta Toys. Here we have a good look at their uh, ZV-02 Flash. Flash has a pretty clean back view overall. He sports a pretty clean looking jet mode. I love the little details here and I like that, uh, that dual opening cockpit. I think that's really cool looking. Here we can see a nice size comparison between Flash and their Bumblebee. And finally we get a nice look at the range of posability and uh, one of his accessories. Now we're moving on to Lemon Tree Toys, a pretty new company uh, focusing mainly on the Bumblebee movie aesthetic. Their first uh, figure uh, set to be released um, somewhat soon is LT01 Lemon Prime. This is their version of a movie Bumblebee and it sits kind of somewhere in the studio series uh, size. This one's about six inches. Lots of detailing on the truck. You can see the rivets and some nice paints. Um, the wheels look sharp. By the looks of things, he's very poseable as well. Uh, you can take a knee um, and balance, which is nice to see. Overall, I think this is a really good looking version of Prime. Um, and I think a lot of people will like to have this one in their own collection. <laughs> Next up is LTO2 Star Cream. Um, I have been waiting for a third party company to just flat out call Star Stream. Uh, star cream instead and I think it's awesome. He looks great. Um, I hope to see more from this uh, specific build soon. Now we get to see their LTO3 purple potato. Uh, as you can see here this is their version of um, an MP style shockwave um, that will um, it will turn into uh, the, the ship that Galvatron gets in Transformers the movie. It's nice to see something different. Yes, he's got his G1 aesthetic, but it's it's a change on it. It's not just a floating space gun. And it's kind of refreshing. And as you can see here, he looks pretty clean from the back. Not, uh, not too much kibble going on. Everything kind of looks like it fits well. I'm really interested to hear what uh, what fans are, are saying about this figure in particular. I just think it has such a nice, clean look to it. Yeah, it's just a lot of purple. Don't get me wrong. I think they understand that. They called it purple potato, but it's it's such a neat take on Shockwave that I am uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I've always wanted that ship from Transformers the movie, and I've always wanted it to transform. I thought that would have been a super cool transformer, but you know this is this is what we have right now, and it's it's there, and I'm, I can't wait to see it. LT04 Blueberry. Um, obviously, this is a version of Soundwave. I think it looks really cool. Um, I don't see any wheels visible on the vehicle, so I don't know, or I don't think that he turns into a Cybertronian truck or anything like that. Maybe he just flat up turns into a, a boombox again, or maybe he's a ship. Who knows? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more from this in the future. Lemon Tree Toys, LT06, sorry, 05 Carrot. Um, I love the names. They remind me a lot of Dragon Ball Z, and it makes me chuckle, and I am here for that. Uh, Ironhide looks awesome. Uh, he's nice and bulky. He's got a clean look to him. Um, really interested to see where this one's going. I really wanted, uh, you know, more, more to, of this out of the actual studio series line. So it's interesting to see this stuff coming. Here we get a nice, uh, detailed look at his face. Uh, I think they did a, a great job of, of rendering it and bringing that movie aesthetic, the Bumblebee movie aesthetic, uh, to life. <laughs> LT07 Eggplant. Um, it's good to be their version of Bumblebee Movie Shockwave. He's got that big beefy arm. And uh, the overall Bumblebee movie look 
uh, that they're going for. And yeah, I know they're teasing it. I think we'll see more of this towards the end of the year. Um, from what I understand is their, their schedule, a lot of thing is a lot of their stuff is on schedule. Yes. There's been a bit of a delay due to events going on, but a lot of their product is scheduled to come out in 2020. <laughs> LTO eight pepper. Um, I think we can all safely assume that we're going to see a lot of seeker and conehead repaints out of this stuff. Uh, I like that they showed off acid storm first. Um, I thought that was just a, a cool, cool way to go or whoever this is. I mean, acid storm wasn't a conehead. So this is, this is wonderful. Um, yeah, go all out on this. Next up is banana force, uh, banana force. If you're not uh, familiar with them have made a non transforming, uh, style of figure and they started off with, uh, their red shooter, which was a very articulated version of RID, uh, Optimus prime, which brings us into MPL 01 B their black and gold repaint of red shooter. I think this is a really interesting design choice. It's not just a scourge, like black and teal repaint. I like the gold accent with the black. I like the little touches of red. Um, maybe I don't know if they're what they're going to call it, but I like this version of their red shooter. Um, and hopefully in the future, they might do an add on kit for it as well. Now, banana force has been really good, um, taking in fan feedback and criticism, uh, because of this, they have redesigned their MPL 2 that was their version of RAD ultra Magnus. Uh, they're going to rework it, um, to try and bring fans something, uh, better. Uh, so they don't have much more to show of this right now, but it is being, uh, reworked and hopefully, uh, they'll have more news to follow shortly. Following their MPL 2 is going to lead into their MPL 3 their version of Die Atlas. Um, it looks incredible. I like the proportions. I love, it's kind of gun to me and I love that. Um, obviously this figure will not transform, but it looks sharp. Um, if you're a fan of Flames Toys, if you're a fan of the first Banana Force release, I think this is an easy choice for a lot of fans. And lastly, we have the MPL-04. Uh, this is their version of a G1-ish Optimus Prime. Um, it's still early in development by the looks of things, so it can take a lot of different directions. And based on what they've said, that they, they do appreciate fan feedback, um, let them know what you think. Uh, do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, they're really good about this. They, they have gone to the drawing board a couple of times and I respect that. Um, so yeah, let them know what you think. I personally, I'm, I'm interested to see where this is going. Following banana force, we're going into transform element, uh, transform element have been doing movie, uh, style designs as well as their own legends figures set to release very shortly is their, um, transform element, uh, beetle. Um, their version of uh, the movie Bumblebee. This character and this design is being seen a lot right now in uh, the third party world. Um, it's such a fun design. It, it's such a different take on the traditional movie Bumblebee, which some fans didn't like and some fans love. Um, but I think a lot of people kind of agree that this is a really good looking Bumblebee. As I think we can all expect, it's going to come with different accessories um, and, and highly posable. By the looks of things, it's pretty well balanced. If you can do a high kick like that and still stand without toppling over, that's an A in my books. You can see uh, the the weapon or the, the blaster accessory that comes with them. I'm one of the few people that doesn't like the design of the Bumblebee movie blaster cannon. I liked his original movie hand cannon better. I thought it was a better look. Um, but I get that some people really love this and more power to them. I do like that they managed to get the wheels and the wings cleanly on the back. Um, I, I just hated how the, the masterpiece movie Bumblebee had everything just sticking out like door wings. It, it just, I don't like that design. Now you can see a, a good amount of back detail tucked in behind the door wings and the, and the tires. The car mode looks pretty good. Um, nice and faithful to the original design. It looks good from the side too. Um, it holds the original shape of a VW bug pretty well. And the back of the vehicle mode looks pretty clean too. Yeah, there's some panel breaks, but I mean, that's going to happen in a figure like this. As I mentioned before, they are doing legends style figures as well. So here's a teaser for their next beast wars legends figure, 
Uh, they're going to be doing their version of Scorponok. They recently released Black Arachnia. I think the name was Black Widow. And they have a rat trap coming as well. Here we see his robot mode. Um, it's very clean looking. Um, he doesn't have a face yet because this is still a work in progress. Uh, but I like where they're going with it. It just screams the, the Beast Wars animation look. And I love it. I like the way that the tail comes up over the head. Uh, I like the big goofy claws. I think this is going to be really cool, especially for Beast Wars collectors who don't get a lot of third-party love. I mean, there is some, but there's not a ton. Um, and Legends figure collectors. I think this is a really neat idea. And from there, we move into Kang Toys. Uh, Kang Toys have started working on their version of a six-figure combiner Predaking. Now we're going to look at their version of Dive Bomb. Their Firmament is what they're calling it. Uh, very stylized design. It's got a pretty wicked looking uh, bird mode. Um, I like the way that the wings bend. It looks like the, the feathers are almost articulated. I love the look of the claws and the, the legs. There's a lot of detail in there that doesn't usually get associated with Dive Bomb. Usually it's very square and blocky like the rest of the G1 Predacons. But this is a nice design. And here you can see the wings spread out in his robot mode. Gives it a very Gundam wing look. Um, I think it's neat. I, I like I like how all the, the parts hanging off the legs almost look like side skirt armor. Um, the helmet, the bird head, has that very kind of battle helmet look. I think it's a sharp idea. Here we get another shot of the bird from a different angle. Um, it is just a render at this time. Uh, but I love the details. I like that he can spread the wings out, but I don't know if there's a lot of people that have the room in their collection for a, a single figure that has that kind of um, reach <laughs> and, and taking up real estate in their display. But realistically, not a lot of people are going to be displaying these individual uh, figures in their robot modes for the rest of their time on your shelf. He's got a pretty clean looking back, and it looks like he's got a bit of heel support as well, which is nice to see. Here we get to see a nice side profile. Uh, with the wings compressed, um, and it gives it a, a kind of a regal looking cape. Here we get one last look at the bird mode, or his, his animal mode, um, and you can see thrusters there on his back um, to kind of break up that just bird look. I like it. Here we got one last look at the back in robot mode, again with the wings compressed. Here we get our last picture from Kang Toys. It's a teaser of the combined mode for Predaking. I understand that they've made some uh, design modifications to it um, and hopefully we get to see more with the release or more information with the release of the next figure. Next up is Giga Power Toys. Giga will be doing a limited edition version of their Grassor figure or slag uh, figure in a, a more battle-worn uh, look. Grassor will include a new set of heads and a different paint scheme. Here we can see one of the other heads he comes with. If you missed out on Grassor the first time, or if the colors weren't just what you wanted them to be on the first release, this is an excellent option uh, to get a nice, big, masterpiece-style um, Dinobot. If for some reason you're not familiar with the Giga Power Gigasaurs, they are highly detailed, highly poseable, um, masterpiece-style Dinobots. Here you really get to see that battle-worn look that they're talking about. It's almost like a coat of rust uh, dry brushed on top of the paint uh, gives everything a much muddier look in in the best way possible and as you can see here baby got back oh lot coming and again we get to see a lot of these new paint details on the face you can see a little bit of wear on the bottom of the jaw you can see the highlighting um, around the, the the panel lines and it looks really neat it looks really sharp uh, it should also be noted that this figure is only limited to about 400 pieces. Um, it is scheduled to, to release in March, so um, some companies overseas might have it right now, and local retailers will have it shortly. From Giga Power, we're moving right into fans' hobby. We'll start off with MB13 Ace Hitter, their version of the Transformers Headmaster Siren. Um, this is just an early prototype image, just so they can get their proportions down. Uh, as you can see, um, the Headmaster Junior can fit in the driver's seat. It's got stuff like pop-up headlights. Um, it's pretty detailed, even as it is right now, and it's still not quite finished. We get to see um, its posability uh, and a good look at the front and the back. 
and he'll pair nicely with their MB12 Athena, who, as you can see here, has a much more finished look uh, than we've seen previously. Um, so we'll see more from her shortly. Fans Hobby are going to release an upgrade kit for their uh, Double Evil. This will include a new weapon with spring-loaded firing bullets. Um, it'll have new eyes, uh, two new faceplates, and new chest armor. Here you can see the new weapon installed on the tank mode of, um, of Double Evil um, and how it looks in hand. Now we get a look at uh, how the chest armor looks, what the new eyes look like, as well as the two new faceplates. Next we have MB-15 Naval Commander. This is their take on Armada Optimus Prime. Here we see Naval Commander in his uh, vehicle mode, um, the truck and trailer. Uh, you'll see here that there, there's areas for uh, mini cons to store. Um, it can uh, stand on its own. Uh, and it also has an option where you can, you can switch the location of his arm cannon slash smokestacks. You can put them on the front, you can put them on the side, just to give it a different look in truck mode. We can see here Naval Commander's mini robot companion. Um, it functions just like other minicons. It can attach to the side. Um, it can attach um, on his shoulder in combined mode. Um, so it, it keeps the, the docking system um, that has been used with other previous mini robots. Here we can also see um, the mini robots uh, vehicle mode and robot mode. Much like the original Armada Optimus Prime, this trailer also has a base mode. Um, you can see uh, where there's a stand for the turret for Optimus to go, um, and it still holds on to uh, mini vehicles as well in little compartments. As you can see, there's lots of interaction with uh, mini cons and other mini robots uh, that work just fine uh, with the base mode and with the trailer mode as well. Finally, we get a look at the Naval Commander Combined Mode. Um, it's big, it's beefy, uh, just like previous fans' hobby releases. This is their wheelhouse. This is where they really shine, is, is the big combined mode. Uh, and it does look like there are there, there's room uh, on that figure for eventual um, Power Links partners. Now we're moving on to fans' toys. Taking a trip way back to FT02 with Acoustic Wave. Like a lot of their figures recently, they are including an option to go with a more toy look uh, and the cartoon look. He'll fold up nicely into his Walkman mode. He looks good with all of the other fans toys cassette warriors. Here we get a side-by-side -side comparison of a more cartoon look compared to the toy look option. A nice group shot with Acoustic Wave and his minions. And here we get a nice family portrait. We can see here that the accessories, his weapons, still transform into batteries and they store in his back in robot mode and in Walkman mode. And one last look at Acoustic Wave on his own. Now we'll take a closer look at um, the cassette minions. There's Rumble and Frenzy, I assume, um, with the pile drivers that are activated by uh, um, buttons in the base of the pile driver. Now we get to look a little closer at Ravage, um, how clean he looks in tape mode, and how he looks um, in his Jaguar mode. And to wrap up the minions, Laser Beak, or Buzzsaw, or Laser Saw, who knows. Um, you can see him here in the cassette mode, and how detailed the bird mode looks. I like the, uh, the angle of the wings and the, the shape of the beak. It's a nice look. Moving on from Soundwave, we're moving into their Tesla 2.0, their version of G1 Perceptor. Again, highly detailed, highly poseable, everything you kind of expect from fans' toys. Tesla looks to be a nice update of the previous figure. Um, I know a lot of people are still looking for the, the, the original Tesla. Now this gives you a great option to pick up uh, a new version. We get to look at his fairly clean um, microscope mode, as well as a diaclone tank mode. Here we can see Tesla breaking the news to some poor schlub that the wounds are fatal. Now we don't know who it is because there's a big question mark on his face. And here's a good look at uh, the accessories that are going to come with Tesla. His weapon that can, still, uh, that can extend into his rifle and a couple of different head options. Now we get one good look of uh, 
Perceptor from different angles. The back is nice and clean. Uh, this is what looks to be a really nice figure. And here's Tesla with a bunch of his 86 movie companions, uh, all made by Fansoys. Uh, it's a good looking bunch. Moving on to FT-47, their version of G1 Huffer. He has a very clean looking robot mode. Very, uh, again, very G1 animation accurate. His vehicle mode looks good too. I like that it doesn't just look like two legs slapped together for the back of the truck. It looks like the, the cab backpack isn't that, it doesn't look that back heavy. It doesn't look like he's just going to topple over. And I like that. Here you see Huffer posing with fans toys, Braun and Beachcomber. And it really shows how anima animation accurate it is with the placement of those shoulders. We get to see Huffer putting up the good fight with Beachcomber and Braun. And having a nice casual conversation with Beachcomber and Huffer about how he just hates everything. And lastly, a quick look at his accessories before we move on to the next figure. He's got a, a bunch of different rifles, uh, as well as uh, different head sculpts. Here's a nice big surprise from Fan Toys. Uh, FT-48 Jazz. This version of Jazz looks fantastic. He's not too bulky and he has a nice sleek design. Fans have been wanting a, uh, an official masterpiece Jazz for a while now. This scratches the itch perfectly. He's sporting a really nice looking alt mode. And Jazz is styling and profiling from all the angles. He looks great. Finally, we get to see a nice side-by-side -side of Jazz uh, in robot mode and in his vehicle mode. And I think both look just stellar. And here we see Jazz with FT-49, their take on Mirage. The alt modes look pretty good together. As you can see, Jazz is, is much farther along uh, the design process than Mirage is. Um, but we can definitely expect to, to see more from this in the coming months. Again, like we had with Jazz, we have a nice side-by-side -side of Mirage in his robot mode and in his alt mode. Um, they are a little blurrier compared to the others because, like I said, they're still in development. And now on to Mastermind Creations. We have a prototype image of Mastermind Creations a DZEV figure, that's their take on Death Saurus. We also have a prototype image of the uh, lion beast that becomes his chest plate. And we can see here his big space turkey mode. Big old turkey. It's really detailed and it looks like it jumped out of the comic book. It's very IDW inspired version of Death Saurus. And you can see him here next to MMC's Coulter, or the shattered glass version thereof. You can see uh, DZF in his continuum mode, uh, which is a more G1 version of the character. There's a number of different things um, on the continuum mode that the regular version doesn't have. A different head, different wings, and what look to be different uh, talons on his feet. The continuum version comes with the Eagle Breastmaster as well. A lot of nice detail on the wingspan and on the, uh, the shoulder cannons for the bird. Here's a look at uh, fan favorite IDW character, um, Chrome Dome, uh, but in MMC's version, his name is Nemo. It might actually be pronounced Nemo, as in like Nemo Surgeon, Mnemonic, MN. Either way, it's a really solid looking figure. Included with the Nemo figure would be his companion motif. Uh, this set will come in a two pack, um, and if I remember correctly, they will include, um, a part for them to hold hands. Here's Nemo in his alt mode. It's very sleek, very Blade Runner looking. Um, I love the design. I like how, uh, the big chunky wheels at the back, the small wheels at the front. It's a really unique design. And finally, a, a little sneak peek under the hood, or rather the entire vehicle. Um, just a, a nice little shot of the underbelly of the vehicle. And here we see a, uh, a recolor of MMC's uh, Ocular Max Remix Jaguar, uh, a cartoon version or a more cell accurate, cell animation accurate version of Ravage. One of the things I've enjoyed the most about the Remix line is the cassettes come in a cassette holder. Here you can see Jaguar interacting with a uh, cage accessory uh, and picking up a key that probably fell off Hound's hip. It's a great looking accessory for fans that really want to recreate a, uh, a moment in uh, the old cartoons. The designs of this Ravage really lend well to the cell 
animation uh, accurate color scheme. This is also a great opportunity for any fan that may have missed Ravage the first time around that he was released. The head sculpt is just incredible on this figure. So much detail, uh, and you can almost hear the sounds that Ravage used to make in the G1 show. One of the exclusives that uh, are now available online uh, would be uh, the Ocular Max Docat. It was the uh, white and blue repaint of Jaguar. Here we get to see again the detail that MMC puts into their Ocular Max line um, in the way that the cassette sits um, perfectly in the cassette holder. I like the way that the metallic blues uh, mingle with the white on the cassette, and I think it looks really sharp, unique enough to stand out from the others. The alt mode is in scale with a regular real-life cassette that you would find in a Walkman in the 1980s. Docat shares the same mold with Jaguar and shares all of the posability and vicious looks. And he's just as adorable as Ravage as well. Look at him, you can almost see him booping a koi fish in a pond. The figure itself is very sturdy, uh, able to pose dynamically on uneven surfaces. This is the same look my cat gives me when it wants breakfast in the morning. Here we're treated to a nice shot of uh, Azalea Alternative and Assaultus. Um, and these figures look amazing. But unfortunately right now, with the, the state of the world, things are going to get pushed back. But every good thing is worth waiting for. Uh, so I think we can expect to see a slight delay on a lot of figures. Um, and unfortunately, these ones won't be any exception. Here's another TFCon exclusive uh, that, again, I do believe is available online right now. Uh, it would be the Azalea Protoform mode. I'm sure most are aware, but for those that aren't, this color scheme, this paint scheme, uh, is a homage to the original prototype uh, colors on G1RC. It's a wonderful design sculpt that holds up well. I love the look of the Protoform colors. That was always something of a grail to a lot of people, so this will be really interesting to see in hand. Again, if you missed Azalea the first time, this is an excellent opportunity to grab a very unique version of the mold. I get a very Reservoir Dogs feeling from this pick, and I love it. Her alt mode comes together very clean, and I like the way that the guns can be stored on top. I also really like the way that the wheels are barely visible, so it gives the illusion of her hovering above the ground. Seeing something this sleek and aerodynamic really makes me want them to try their hand at blur. Here we get a nice group shot of Azalea in uh, all three flavors. Has beautiful uh, artwork for the packaging as well. I think it's safe to say you can always count on MMC for really good looking uh, package art. I love the dissected look of this uh, character art just to show where the, the cogs and wheels and gears and pistons and pipes and all that stuff goes. I think that's so interesting. I hope we get to see more interesting and unique package art like we do with this figure in upcoming figures. And last but not least, um, our final entry was submitted anonymously. Um, they ask that we don't name the company name or what they had called it in the past or what some people had called it in the past. So we're just going to be really ambiguous about the whole thing through all of these pictures. So joining me to talk about this figure is my beautiful wife, Stacy. Say hello, Stacy. Hello, Stacy. <laughs> so Stacy and I had the pleasure of actually being able to take the pictures uh, of this figure. Um, so she was just as involved in snapping the pics as I was. Uh, what do you think of it, Stace? I think that the cardboard background looks very stable behind him. Whoever <laughs> held that did a great job. But more seriously, this figure is amazing. He's articulated the level of detail down to all of those tiny little spikes that flip up on him and that have recesses to go down in. It is incredible. I never thought a giant figure would look this good. I'm not a big fan of big figures, but this guy's very good. Comes with lots of accessories. There's two of these um, disc plates. Um, one can mount on the front of the planet mode and one can actually mount underneath and act like a base to support that planet mode. Or if you're on quarantine right now, it could be a mean game of Frisbee. <laughs> There's lots of detail in the face sculpt and the mouth uh, actually opens and closes, revealing a bunch of teeth and uh, some you know, tongue details. It's, it's pretty neat. And if you use your imagination, he can have any voice you're capable of producing. 
there's a lot of upper body articulation on this figure. The, the waist pivots, um, the midsection pivots as well as part of the transformation. So you can get a lot of different poses and it can do a pretty decent ab crunch as well. And as you can see, he's got a really clean looking back. There's not a whole lot of kibble, uh, hanging off there except for a popped collar. <laughs> and he's got a very kickable booty. Here we get a good look at the, the back of his head. Um, there is a spot that's removable on the back of the head and a button on top, which tells me there should be room for light up eyes or some sort of feature. But when we take that panel off, there isn't any, anything in there right now, but it is just a test shot. I know a lot of people whose heads resemble that. It should have something in there, but when you get it open, it's just kind of empty. And as everyone guessed, the head is completely removable. Um, it has a lot of detail. Uh, even the horns are uh, posable. Here he is doing his best headless horseman impression. I thought the Excedrin just wasn't cutting it. This figure also has uh, a translucent crystal ab section um, to really highlight how well it worked. We took it outside and held it up to the sun. Unfortunately, the... Uh, the angle kind of blocked out some of the brightness, but it really does shine quite well. It's it's translucent on both sides. There's even some cool details on the inside of the chest when you start to transform the figure that are reminiscent of an old movie. Titanic? <laughs> yeah, exactly Titanic. I'm Ever... going to draw him just this way. <laughs> yeah, draw him like a French girl. <laughs> One thing I really wanted to try and show with these pictures is how articulated it is and how many different poses you can put it in. I'm not the best at doing articulated poses, but he does that superhero landing pretty well. I thought you were going for a break dancing move and I was gonna say you nailed it. Or he's squishing a bug. I'm gonna get that spider for you. Urgh. He's a very large and imposing figure. His power level is over 9,000. Even the feet and toes are articulated on this figure. There's a really deep ankle pivot and everything kind of twists and turns to be able to position it in a way that you want. The figure's so big, in fact, it was hard to keep him inside my hick rig light box. He stands at about 19 inches, um, and he takes up a lot of space when you try and pull off poses like this. I thought it'd be cool to have him posing as if he was going to try and attempt a Kamehameha, you know, to destroy a planet. The wings on him are very articulate as well. Uh, they can rotate, they can pivot up and down, and they can separate, or they can all kind of tab together to have a cleaner line. It really allows for a lot of dynamic... Uh, posing and, and just to show how much of a, a real devil this figure can be. This figure transforms from tall, dark and handsome robot into a small fat little planet, just like my stomach. The teeth on the planet mode can open and close fully and the mandibles on the side are fully articulated. So you can see here at the side, the planet rings snap into four different contact points around the sphere. And they've repurposed one of the little tractor beams to be a stand for him. And there's a little groove cut out that you can see that it slots right into. So from the front, he's displayed really beautifully and has just this nice stand out of the accessories. Here he is with the base and tractor beam attached to the front to give it that look that the planet is eating uh, debris and junk. And people. Here you can see how those side grooves on the tractor beam interact with the mandibles on the side, they can cleanly move in and out with those grooves there. And here he is his planet mode and you can see all of his uh, accessories grouped together. So pretty. So Stacy and I wanted to take a couple of fun pictures as well. This figure has so much personality, so we thought we'd play around with it a bit. She made me a tiny little Tim Hortons mug for Christmas. He likes his coffee like he likes his planets. Cold, ground up and frozen. My cabbages! So for our final slide, we wanted to propose a toast to you, the fans. And thank you for joining us, uh, watching the video online with everyone today. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you all so much for watching the video and all of your support. We do this for you, the fans. A special thank you to all the people that made this possible. Our sponsor, The Chosen Prime, Robot Kingdom, for always helping supply new images for the panel. My wonderful wife, Stacy, for keeping me motivated and on track. A big thank you to Evan Phillips for putting this all together. Go check out his, his YouTube channel, Eventainment, for the amazing Skeletoys. We will see you all at the next DFCon.